I'm Laura Ingram. This is Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thanks for being with us. The real terrorists. That's the focus of tonight's angle. All right, the Democrats had their narrative set right long before Biden was sworn into office. Theirs wasn't a story about how Americans would thrive or be safe and happy under Biden's policies. No, because their climate change obsession would deeply damage American families. They always knew that. Therefore, as kind of a preemptive measure, they decided to argue the negative, that electing Republicans in the future would be akin to electing terrorists who would seek to blow up our entire system. This is just an extraordinarily dangerous uh, course for Republicans to be taking in terms of our democracy. The Republican Party can no longer say that they don't agree with the insurrectionists, with the bigots, with the racists. There may now be people aligned with white supremacists who are in Congress. How, how do you protect the country from them? It could be that we have a Republican majority in Congress this fall, and if that happens, you may see Republicans in Congress wanting to cut the money to the Department of Justice to turn the lights out. We may lo lose our democracy. The attorney general issued ominous warnings. The top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate it for the superiority of the white race. They announced new task forces. I've decided to establish a domestic terrorism unit to augment our existing approach. This group of dedicated attorneys will focus on the domestic terrorism threat. And of course, especially after January 6th, the media never looked back. So Chicago could remain a killing field more than 100,000 Americans could die from overdoses. China could plot against us in the Asian Pacific. And instead of covering any of that as it needs to be covered, the press focused almost singularly on vilifying the conservative movement with groundless smears about an insurrection that wasn't. And with the wheels coming off the Democratic Party because, you know, look, because of our crumbling economy, the January 6th mess is still all they've got. This week's hearing, the January 6th hearing, which surely are the most important hearings since Watergate. These hearings are going to be quite compelling. I think they understand the importance of leveraging live television um, to, to convince uh, the American public uh, how serious this was. We have this committee investigation coming up, which, again, if you really love America, if you believe in American democracy, if you're a patriot, you want to know what happened on January 6th. Oh, Joe, tell us about it. Now, first off, on its face, these allegations are ludicrous. The idea that that ragtag group of people who smashed their way into the Capitol, that they were the product of some organized effort orchestrated out of the West Wing, it's beyond ridiculous. If there was true evidence of any of that, we would have already heard about it. Now, the moment I saw what was happening on Capitol Hill, I texted Mark Meadows, the chief of staff of the White House. I told him to ask the president to tell everyone to go home. I think I was the first person to do that, maybe one of the first. I knew it was going to hurt the cause. And I said the same thing publicly on Twitter throughout the afternoon and that night on The Angle. Now, it was obvious. A group of angry people had whipped up the crowd into a frenzy, and that's when things became violent. Now, we've always said that in any case, when laws are broken, perpetrators need to be punished, justice must be done without regard to politics. But that wasn't enough for the Democrats. They have attempted, unsuccessfully, to use January 6th to indict the entire Republican Party and protect themselves. In other words, to insulate themselves from any accountability for the devastation they're currently wreaking upon America. Indeed, it is the Democrats and their far-left base that have been the ones terrorizing America these past few years. Now, we're never going to forget the wildings that masqueraded as protests. You believe that was America? And then, of course, Antifa attacking citizen journalists. Yo, yo!
Then there was BLM harassing innocent Americans. Abortion fanatics besieging the homes of Supreme Court justices. Showing up at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church in Texas. It's my body, my choice. It's my body, my choice. Overturn, go. And if that underwear wasn't enough to terrify you, they're upping the ante by vandalizing the crisis pregnancy centers around the country. It started about a month ago in Madison, Wisconsin. We're investigating the fruits and of hate and violence in the form of an arson, where a specific nonprofit group was targeted for their beliefs regarding the issue of abortion. And it continues to this day. This past weekend, a pregnancy crisis center in Washington, D.C.'s Capitol Hill neighborhood was vandalized with red paint, eggs, and a message reading, Jane says revenge. In Amherst, New York yesterday, more acts of terror. Compass Care Pregnancy Services Clinic had its windows broken, it was graffitied and set on fire. Police are investigating it as arson. Jane's Revenge is this group that's attempting uh, to, to, to strike fear into the hearts of pro-life service organizations to keep them uh, from providing care. The intent was for Compass Care to stop services. We won't stop. And when police officers in Asheville, North Carolina, called my next guest, Christy Brown, the executive director of Mountain Area Pregnancy Services, to tell her that the clinic she runs had been vandalized, they warned her that it was bad. When she got to the door of her clinic this morning, she found threatening messages sprayed in red paint on three sides of the building, and the sidewalk as well was broken with windows. Painted on the property were the messages, if abortions aren't safe, neither are you. We'll show that picture in a moment. Now, understand, these homes are often run by volunteers, most of them are, who selflessly try to assist unwed, oftentimes scared, expectant mothers. These crisis pregnancy centers offer young women hope and compassion when they need it most. So think of how sick those are who threaten the sanctuary. How is any of this not a hate crime? Where are the congressional hearings? The Capitol Hill press conferences condemning the hate groups behind these threats? We know the answer. If you're pro-life, Democrats really don't think you deserve to be protected from hate. In fact, you deserve hate. Once again, the Democrats have gone so far left, they've left America. None of this is going to break through, I don't think, or make the slightest difference in November. Most regular people, I don't know, I'm getting the sense that they see January 6th as an awful aberration, not as the event that defines America or the Republican Party. But Democrats and their media minions, they're going full steam ahead. They're hoping for a runaway summer blockbuster, the definition of out of touch should include blowing countless millions of taxpayer dollars on partisan hearings when American moms still can't find baby formula. So the real terrorists are those seeking to overthrow every American tradition, from the apolitical nature of the Supreme Court to the sanctity of churches. And they're not doing it through democratic processes, but through intimidation, threats, and yes, even violence. And that's the angle. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.